are back. We are prepping ourselves for game two of the series. And it looks like game one. MVP is going to be a tie. Just to, oh, excuse me, everyone, just to give you a little bit of a heads up. We have two votes for Bukake, Arizona Prodigy, and Dr. Pingu. Joystick and Levy each get netted themselves one vote. So GG's, congratulations. We are now on to game two. Let's go ahead and let's see what we got going for us. I'm very curious. Uh, uh, there's a couple things that I would like to see done differently. Um, particularly in the in the draft phase, there was a lot of a lot of comfort and safety. Um, so, I mean, realistically speaking. Um, Realistically speaking, there's a couple things that I would like to see done differently. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of safe picks taken, and I'm okay with that. But this is I think this is the time where we see the uh, this is where we start to see some of these more pocket picks, these more you know out there a little. I'm not gonna say questionable, but these out there not as not as typical picks. Um, Thrown, thrown at us. Hey, shout outs to Murphy Roddit, which I believe is Riley. Um, welcome back. Tier 2 sub. 16 month streak. Everyone, you should be like, you should be like Murph. My good sir, I'll have a sip of water to that. So. I, I'm really, I'm really looking to see some, some very interesting, uh, very interesting setups here for game, here for game two. You know, there might be some, uh, there might be some very interesting draft selections. It's maybe some changes. I don't know. I kind of want to see what what each of them is thinking. I think they, in their mind, have a little bit of things they want to do differently. Labby had very good jungle pressure. I think the weakest part of the of, of I don't really know. There wasn't really super a terribly weak part for Labby. It was a very strong game one. I think with Biscuit Force Five, the laning, the early laning phase for their bot lane was very good. It was a very safe lane, a very you know, a very a very like you know, one that you want to see. Like that's that's kind of the ideal laning phase. Um, so, so for me, it was very hard to not go ahead and say, like, this was really clean. So, we are going to hop right on over into pick ban for set two. So we are looking, we are looking right now for some pick bans. We see the Nasus ban. The respect given to Dr. Pengu. Absolutely. That's what you love to see. Hmm. Mm -mm -mm. Banning out the gin, go ahead and give Rob the respect of a very practiced gin player. Very good, very good. So what are we gonna see? Are we gonna see a little more targeted bot lane? Maybe see the Alawi. So they're targeting top lane. They know that Dr. Pingu and uh, you know the, the matchup for Dr. Pingu and Necro guys is gonna be very difficult. Necro guys are necking this man out. They've been the Sivir. They take the Sivir away from Joystick. So they're going to probably force, force Joystick onto something different. They ban Nautilus away from Biscuit. Nautilus is a very good champion. Um, particularly as a lane bully. I mean, we saw a little bit of that last time from, from Arizona Prodigy. So, really strong. We see the Morgana pick for B, for Biscuit Force 5. That could be flexed to either support lane for Biscuit. Or they could run it mid. With a uh, OG Juice Man, Tank of Juice, formerly I mean, that's tricky. Either way, it's a really safe pick in both lanes, and I really like it. We see that Caitlyn picked up a, a very good AD. 
I think Caitlyn is super strong right now in the meta. She she feels really good, so I like to I like to see that. Um, I very I very much like to see that. Um, what are we gonna see? We see the lease. Oh, Labby's lease in. Labby's lusty lease in, lads. Let's go. This should have been this. You know, Labby, you need to add that to your title. Just make it L to the. Just make your title L to the fourth. Ooh, Nunu and Willa picked up for uh for what you might call it. Happy by three. I, I do like this Nunu Willa pick. I think Nunu and Willa is a very good jungler right now, particularly with you know the, basically having double smite and it's it's kind of nutty. So for me, I I think that's a really good pickup. Um, very safe jungler, very easy to kind of farm up with. Also has really good engage. Just gotta drift. Uh, Biscuit Force Five picks Cog. Cogma. Wait a minute. Oh, I'm getting word that that's not a Cogma. That's a Lux. Oh, so Cogma is supposed to be Lux. Lux Morgana. Ooh. Wait. Oh, is that the fable Tristana top lane? Is that Tristana top lane? The world may never know. I'm looking forward to see if it is Tristana top lane, though. That will be very interesting. What are you going to counterpick into it? Kaisa, banned. Love it. Champion's nutty. I don't think she's good. Like, in, in my opinion, I don't think she's good right now. I just think she's strong in general, but I just don't like her. So, maybe it's just, maybe it's just like pettiness. I just don't... Just petty. I don't really like her. Oh, it's Chizuki's Trist mid. Ooh, that could be a Trist mid. We're going to see the Yace band out. Yace with the soft... Oh, whoa! Whoa! Change it up to Thresh. Whoa! Speaking. Making sure we all good in the neighborhood. So they ban Thresh. Hmm... You know, easy prodigy, Arizona, easy Arizona prodigy. Ooh, yo, if they steal, if they steal the pick, and it's Predator Kate mid, that would be spicy. I want to see it. Listen, hey, I'm calling you out. If you want to play Kate mid, actually, please don't, because Nolan does it better. Um, hashtag my mid laner. But yeah, I don't know. I think this is going to be a very interesting matchup, particularly if it does, if it is. Um, Tristana in one of the so it's gonna be Tristana ideally in one of the solo lanes. Um, so Tristana in solo lanes is gonna be very interesting. Um, is it gonna to go to you know it could go it could go to it could go to um, Dr. Pingu. We see the Blitz Crank hover. That would be interesting. Okay, that's that's gonna to prove to be interesting. I would not be surprised to see BF5 pick up the Lucian. Um, Lucian would be a good high mobility champion to evade the Blitzcrank hooks. Um, because really you're kind of out of options with Sivir Band, Kaisa Band, Ezreal Band. So, what are we going to see? We're going to see, so they're probably going to pick A, they have to pick AD. So we see Kled top, Kled's very strong. Good pick, good pick. Um, so Bukake Poro probably going to get the Morgue. Biscuit probably gonna get the Lux, which is this Kogma pick. And what is gonna be last? We need an AD. Wait a minute. Wait, dude. Whoa, we got something spicy going on. Hmm. Is it Lux Morg bot? That would be nasty. I think it's Lux Morg bot. Lux Morg bot with Clint with Clint Mordekaiser solo lanes. Ooh, what are we gonna see? What are we gonna see? What are we gonna see here? And we see the Darius picked up. So, all in all, a very interesting, uh, very interesting draft for this. Yeah, it's an extra. Sp it is an extra spicy draft. No, dude, it's not Kogma. It's Lux. That's sad.
You missed you missed you missed the notice there. Gosh, Joshua. Actually, I don't know if you've been here, but hey, welcome if you're in heaven. So, yeah, we have a we have a very interesting game here. This 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 game two pick band is a uh, oh it's JJ Bell. Hey, what's good, homie? Um, uh, yeah, it's it's Lux. Um, I do think mid matchup will be the key. Because it's gonna, you're gonna be looking at a, uh, you're probably gonna be looking at a Mordekaiser into into a Tristana, because your Darius is gonna go top lane. So you're looking at Mord, you're gonna be looking probably 100% at a Mordekaiser Tristana, unless you're doing something crazy where you, you know, you do Lux Mord bot lane or Lux uh, and Morgana mid. There's a, there's a ton of very different options. I wouldn't be surprised though. Um, I do think you have a point, Red Wolf. I think this will come down to mid lane. But I wouldn't also be surprised to see this be a battle of the top lanes. Darius Kled. These individuals can be very strong frontline bruisers um, as well. So if you can't get past the frontline, you really are in a, in, a, in a pickle there to be uh, dealing damage to everyone else. So that's going to make it tricky as well. Um, I don't know. I think this is going to be a very, very demonstrate like a... An eye-opening matchup for both teams. You're getting some spicy picarinos out there. You get the, uh, you know, whatever the bot lane is going to be for the side, for for uh, biscuit force. You know, <clears throat> excuse me, goodness gracious. Whether you're going to be running the Mordecai's or Lux, Mordecai's or Morg, Morg, you know, something like that. Um, yeah, it's just, I don't know. Looking, looking back, they gave the, uh, they went ahead and, and, and felt comfortable enough giving the, uh, giving the Morgana pick potentially back to Bukake Poro. So that's interesting. I don't know how deep his pool is, but if they're gonna keep putting him on Morgana, Morgana's a very safe and like consistent champion to play. So you don't really want to give someone like their comfort picks. For me, that's like that's just asking kind of for a for a death witch. Switch screen so you can see the spice. They're uh, they're redoing they're redoing the draft. But what I what I can what I can do what I can do for you lads. We can look at this. We can look at this and we can discuss this. Um, so so what I'm thinking, the lane matchups are going to be. See, that's my question. Good question. Um, good question, Murph. So we have Morgana, Nunu, Lux, Kled, Mord. I have a feeling it's going to be, well, we're going to see Kled top. We're going to see Kled Darius battle it out in the top lane. I think we're going to see Mordekaiser, Tristana, mid lane. Blitzcrank and Caitlyn is obviously going to be the bot lane for Labby and Jungle for that. I mean, Jungle jungle and top lane to me seems pretty obvious. It may not be. But Jungle is going to be Nunu, Lee Sin. I think top is going to be uh, is going to be Kled, Darius with potentially Mord. I don't think you play Kled mid, though. So you do Kled, Darius, top. I think you play either Morg or Mord into Tristana mid. And you do Lux in the other bot lane, and I think that's going to be actually really. I think to me that's going to be kind of new new cog. Wait, it's not a wait. DJ trolling. That's the old school bot lane. That's the old school bot lane, my guy. Um. Yeah, I think I I think Murph's just trolling at this point. He's just a meme lord. But yeah, I, I'm I'm really curious to see. Um, I, I mean, I am very curious to see. Um, like what happened. So I don't know. Maybe we'll maybe we'll see something really spicy where it'll be like it'll be more Nunu bot and it's actually more kind of jungle. Like that would be hypey. You know, I, I don't know. 
Um, that may, that may, that very well, you know, that may very well be the case. But I can't tell you. I'm just, I'm just a poor boy. I need no sympathy. No trundle. No trundle. That's sad, dude. I wish trundle was in this game. Trundles, trundles will be. Biscuit force. Biscuit force. All right, hey, what do we think? We have one uh, triple. We have one L cubed win. Yeah, we see the we see the biscuit pick deluxe. We so we'll see some interesting stuff here. Darius for Doctor Pinguini. Doctor Pinguini Linguini. Bippity boopity boppy. Uh, this is gonna make it or break it. What's Necro guy gonna get? Is he gonna get that Cled? We're gonna see. I think it's Cled Darius. Yeah. Oh, things are getting interesting. What is boot? What is boot cake Poro gonna get? I'm very interested. We see, we do see the new new pick. Um, uh, what do we got? Then oh, Bukaki Poro pulling out the Tristana mid. Hey, Murph, you called it. Good stuff. We're seeing the Jizuke L the LEC. We're seeing it. It's what you want. You're getting exactly what you asked for. Yeah, you're saying the Tristana mid. You can get hyphy. We can get hyphy for some Tristana mid, baby. You got double AD carry now on the side of Levy's Lusty Laddy Boys. I always want to say Levy's Lusty Sailors, because that just sounds like. I don't know, that flows off my tongue better. Like the alliteration of Levy Lusty Lads rolls, but like Levy's Lusty Sailors. It sounds like a bar too. Like it sounds like that could be like a like a, a bikini bar or something. You're getting so off topic. This is why I don't need this. I don't need the solo cast. Um, feels bad. But uh, anyways, here's Wonderwall. Uh, yeah, joystick getting the Kalen. So you have the double hyper carry, and uh, that's really good. You have the Kalen Trist. Trist, you know, Trist falls off a little bit harder than I think Caitlyn does. But Caitlyn can still do a ton of damage. Oh, we're going to see the... It is going to be Rob on Mord. No. Oh. Oh, they're going to give Mord to Juice Man. So it's going to be Morgana Lux bot lane. That's actually disgusting. Like you have... Permanent standstill forever. That's actually disgusting. And we see the final pick... For Arizona Prodigy. Prodigy. Is that a bush? Is that a bush with eyes? Ren Wolf, what is that a moat? What is that a moat, dude? I see a bush with eyes. Are you like, are you saying you're camouflaged? You're like a sneaky snake? You are, you are a sneaky snake? Okay. 420. Oh, dude, I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, good call. 420 blades it, yeah. Live your best life, man. Happy happy 420 if it's 420 for you, brother. I don't do that, so. I also can't do that because, you know, I, I, I want to become better. Anyways, enough about me. I, would, I really want to get into, now that we know where everything's going, I think, I truly think Morgana Lux is such a disgusting, oh, That lane, just in theory, Vice in practicum, in theory, is disgusting. Oh my god, it's nasty. So that's just like, you don't want to see it. Um, golly. So. Blizzo, bruh. You don't need it. You don't need to. Yeah, dude, live your life. Like, I drink water, dude. Water, it, like, water's my 420 blazing. Like, whoa, good stuff. Um, side note, I think we do have another game coming on. We have another game after this one. Actually, starting probably simultaneously towards the end of this one. Um, after this game, it will be the... So we'll have two lower bracket, or we'll have an upper bracket game and a lower bracket game. 
at 10 p.m. tonight. I better drink more water than you, bro. Oh, you're probably swole ass, bro. Good stuff, bro. Um, so, yeah, really what you're looking like, what I'm looking forward to in, the, in this match, I really want to see a lot of pressure put out, for, at least for both teams. I want to see on the side of Biscuit Force, I would like to see the pressure and the roaming capabilities and, and the decision-making of Juice Man, especially on this Mordekaiser, to isolate a single individual, who they feel. Um, oh, good call, good call. Um, I want to see... I really want to see the decision making from Juice Man to target an individual with Mordekaiser Ultimate. That I think will decide like how these fights go and who's going to go where and how it's going to go. I've been to a gym in years. Oh, that's okay, bro. You're still probably swole. Um, I also think Kled is a very strong pick in the meta right now. And seeing like you know seeing Kled, I think it's going to be very good for this, like, seeing how well you can match up into a Darius. I don't know, I don't know top, my top lane matchups as well as I should. But I do think, I do think that's a preferred matchup for the, uh, for the Kled, maybe? I may be wrong, so I'm gonna correct me if I'm wrong. I think Kled wins that, like. So the map pressure should be greater on the side of Labby Cubed. Um, of Labert, as I said earlier. Um, also, I'm gonna fact check myself for Scooby Scooby Doo's real name. It's I'm pretty sure it's Scoobert. It's oh wait, it's not Scoobert Dubert. Yeah. So Scooby Doo's first name is Scoobert. Fun fact. Um. Yeah, Scooby's full name Scooby is revealed in a 1988 Scooby Doo spinoff, a pup named Scooby Doo. Fun fact Hans Scoobert. Dang. That sucks, Hans, dude. I'm sorry. Um, seems legit. Hans Scoobert. Oh, you know, it might be Hans. Han, honey Scoobert. Oh, honey boy. The pipes, the pipes are calling. We we're getting ready to load into game here, so we're looking at uh you know I'm gonna this is gonna look really bad because the overlay is on top, but I don't really care. We're gonna look at some of these skins. So in terms of skin intimidation, uh, which is a real thing, I'm gonna go ahead and give it to uh laddies laddies. They have two god king, or they have two gods on their team. There's not a single god. There's only a king. Like, if you listen to Eminem's rap god, he must be a rap god, not a rap king. So, I mean, god is therefore greater than king. But, um, I don't really see any masteries out of the ordinary. We do see the Aftershock Lux, which you usually either take that or Dark Harvest. Um, Conqueror, Mordecai, and Romo. We see double aftershock, but we see the inspiration taken by Biscuit and the domination tree taken secondary by Rob. Um, so. We are in game. I'm going to adjust the summoners around real quick. We're going to make it look pretty. All right, game two. Let's get ready to rumble in the jungle, because you know rumble in the jungle, baby. Good skin, good skin. Matt, you solo casting? Yeah, I am, Hans. So you wanna come join me? I would love to have you join me. Um. We're seeing the we're seeing the aggressive bot lane start here from the side of Biscuit Force. Oh, the Caitlyn. Oh, is Joystick gonna step up? If they step up, it's free low. They are sending with a typical five point defense here on the side of Lavi's Lance. Oh, they're going for it. Oh, 
The zoning cue from Rob. Oh, flash cue, flash out from both the Lux and the Caitlyn. Can we see the Lisa Q? Oh, hook! Oh, and there goes the Mordecai. They're taking a lot of damage. There goes the bomb. Drop down. And bear trap there as well. So that's just a lot of summoners down there. We do see the hook, the good hook. They're going to go ahead and reset that. Um, it looks like it's going to be a reset at level 1. And we're going to be behind. Just a little bit. It's going to set up. Uh... Oh, we see Labby asking for help. And we see the Mordecai's are already TPing back to lane. Just not to miss anything. So that's a really early TP at our early, uh, OG Juice man. Um, so we see the ignite down for the blitz, the flash down for joystick, the TP down for Mord, and the flash down for biscuit hat. So we're seeing a lot of very aggressive plays, uh, and it looks like there's going to be some trading top lanes. Very slight, you know, very easy going on. Yo, yeah, what's up, dude? Hey, what's up, Hansu? Welcome to the party. Hey man, how's it going? Yeah, hey, uh, I'm loading in, so. Uh, you missed. You missed. Uh, did you see the level? Did you see the the level one like early fight? Yeah, yeah, I saw that on the stream. Oh, uh, what's your time? If you don't uh, mind me asking. Uh, two twelve. I can pause whenever you whatever you want to. Um, pause at two fifteen. Okay, I'm gonna. I said two 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 twenty two twenty two twenty. Two twenty. Mhm. Two twenty. All right. Uh, you ready? I'm ready whenever you are. Give me the countdown. I'll give you the countdown. We say we go and go. Okay. Three, two, one, go. All right. You gonna do play by player color? Um, up to you, man. Um, I can you should that. probably do PVP. You gonna do that? All right. Sounds good. Yeah, uh, you should do PVP. Oh, okay. I can do that. Yeah, we're just seeing it's a lot of just a lot of trading here. Early going. Good binding there from Biscuit. What are you What are you looking forward to in this matchup? You want, I'm assuming you watched game one. Um, I kind of missed game one because I was trying to hop around between games. But there are currently two, another game going on in the higher bracket currently. Oh, the is um, that the the Naruto the, Sasuke the, Sasuke the, game? Naruto versus Sasuke game. We got a lot of damage coming on mid lane. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of trading. Really good utilizing the passive from OG, and we are seeing the Tristana jump out. Already having to use the detonation bomb to do that. Oh, we do see the bear trap landed on the Doctor Penguin, but he's knowing. Ooh, trading going on top lane. We're gonna see. Come on, give it to him. No, nope, nothing there. Um, if you want, I can also do BBB. It's up to you. I'll let you choose. I really don't care. I'm I'm good for whatever. Okay. Um, I can try BBB. It's a good thing to learn. Yeah, I mean, I can. I either either way, one of us is going to be learning. So, we got some action going on. We just flip flop. Yeah, <laughs> we'll we'll see. We'll see. We Dude, just, just let it go. Yeah. So so far, um, so Labby is on Lee Sin, which is going to be known for his signature champion. I can't believe that was sent to Labby. Um, let's see here. Yeah, particularly after last game, like Labby had a really good performance on it last game. Ooh, missed hook from. And that's a nice binding coming up from Morgana Robin. That's the first blood going to the blue team, given to Lux in the bot lane. That's going to be a lot of gold coming up for the blue team. Yeah, bis good old Bisquick getting his getting this. Result. Oh, fight mid lane. And speaking, of, uh, speaking of gold, there's a big trick coming in. Lab Labby ganking mid lane for the massive damage, but unfortunately, the gank has turned for the worse, and Tristana takes a lot of damage for the trade. Yeah, I'm very interested to see this because there has been a lot of LEC and LCK players opting to play the Tristana in the solo lane. I personally, that, I think it's strong, yeah, but I don't think it's like that strong. That's been the hot topic of the day. Remember the, uh, I don't know if you watched the game at all, when Chris Lugo played Tristana top lane. See, he brought the meta up on to the um, LCS, and there's a lot of nice tra training coming from Dr. Penguin with the Darius. You don't want to get hooked by his ability, because that is certain death. And speaking of certain deaths, that's a bot lane coming in. If you get binding by one, you're going to get binded by another one. So you have to be really careful of how you approach the fight. You don't want to get binded at all. Yeah. It's a nice and, trade coming in for the bot lane. And I'm, I mean, I'm glad. Well, I'm kind of glad. I'm, it's nice to see this, this double mage, this double caster, this double whatever you want to call it. Um, sorcerer for playing TFT. This, this meta kind of going away because I do think I while I think it's strong you know we're starting to see a lot less of it but it this combo I think is actually very disgusting because of the utility not only the utility late game but they also are very high DPS late game mm -hmm. so you know running basically running double double support to to effectively peel for 
your Mordekaiser who's gonna 1v1 someone and your Kled who's gonna be a tank and do a ton of damage as well. Exactly, and speaking a lot of damage, but we have some fight in the top lane. Nakroga comes in with the uh, bear trap on the rope and dashes in, proxy to conquer it, but nothing's gonna happen. And Blistering getting binded by Lux, but nothing's gonna happen. It's a really exciting fight, but with no result, unfortunately. Yeah, and it looks like the Nunu is potentially looking to roam bot, or he may just go ahead and want to opt for this vision control of Dragon. We, you know, he doesn't know it, but we see Lavi backing. This would be, oh, looking for the mid gank. Oh, the Morgan, Mordecai had proc the ulti. The um, Happy by 3 cannot target, and what? It, oh, is that an insect? Is that an insect? Clap! Yo! Fabulous play coming in by Bukaki Polar. That was actually pretty crazy. Dubbing in, dubbing to the other side of the. Uh, a Mordekaiser and then make sure that uh, wait hold up yeah Wing to the other side of Mordekaiser pushing him into the tower and With then ulti. getting it some quality plays right there it's really good and speaking yeah. of Tristana mid we have some question about um from Nox Nocio coming in what is with the ADC mid I feel like I saw that last night you it's, absolutely um, did the Caitlyn well, mid here's is... the thing <laughs> Caitlyn mid is just Nolan been Nolan. It's not that it's good. It just wait. wants to play. Just he wants to play. Okay. But wait, but, but it was good. But okay, it was. Okay. Oh, oh. But okay. it was. Good. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop you right there and just say mm, it's okay at best. But Tristana mid makes sense because of the mobility and the burst damage coming in. And I see a lot of Tristana mid uh, in also high level play as well. Gotcha. Hey, what's your time at? Mine froze for a second. I'm at seventeen. Uh, I can pause at twenty. Okay. Yeah. You ready? Yep. Three, two, one, go. Yeah, just lagged for a second. My bad, everyone. I don't know what happened. There. Not a problem, man. Weird. Wow, only a slight, you know, one to one kill, slight gold differential. We're only seeing major CS differentials in the top lane, mid. Well, actually, there's some. Uh, pretty that's a nice binding coming up from Rob. Unfortunately, that's not gonna happen. I just know, and that's a nice um, pull yeah. coming in from Odekaiser, and unfortunately, can't get the sold auto. But that is a decent trade coming in from the mid lane for both sides. Yeah, it looks like it looks like Lavi's team definitely is is like learning from the mistakes. They're up, you know, they had minor mistakes in the early game. It did seem like the the laning phase for Biscuit um, and and Rob last game was very strong. Um, I also just noticed that the um, it's actually Mordekaiser, no, not Mordekaiser, Morgana with aftershock. Yeah, both both Lux and Morg are running aftershock. The only difference is Rob is running domination, and uh, Lux is running inspiration. So very interesting spell set selection. I think you know. I think Rob opted to take it for the uh, what is it? Cheap shot, probably cheap shot and healing. Um, I couldn't. I couldn't tell. Oh, and there's a nice trade coming in. Trade starts and Mordecai uses a shadow realm into the uh, Unfortunately, um, Labyrinth cannot. Say Bukaki Paro, and he goes in again and tries to insect again, but this time he fails, unfortunately. And Ooh, he doesn't, he flashes in, but is he gonna get happy by three? Happy by three, uh, unfortunately, gonna die, but then a lot of fighting happening. Man, top is roaming to the mid lane, and then here comes the rest of the blue team. Say hello, everyone. And we're gonna, Labyrinth is gonna die out of the trade. Yeah, it was a really, really, really well timed, like, just sequence of events. Really good Mordekaiser ult to separate the Tristana and go ahead and initiate the fighting there. Oh, Necro and guy. Necro oh. guy is going in on the tower, getting the aggro, and Rob is taking the tower. He's gonna die, and he heals and stays alive. And just cures a kill by the Blistering. And that's a nice ulti coming up, as well as pull from the Mordekaiser, ultimately getting, I believe, 3 to 1 trade in the mid lane. This is Aaron, boys. This is, we're in Aaron now. Welcome to, welcome to the territory. Welcome to NA Ram. See, I don't play Aram myself, but every time I play PMLCS, I just watch Aram. And it's not even Aram, that's the worst part. Nah, it's it's see you say that, but like Aram's Aram's the good Aram's the good good. Oh we're gonna see uh oh. Oh here we go. Kakaporo and he's gonna commit that that was not a good call, that was almost a suicide. Red team does not want to take this fight. The blue oh, that's an excellent key coming from Lee Sin. That might have actually turned things around, but are they gonna be able to make it count? Unfortunately they do not. And here comes Necro Guy, unstoppable, by the way. Very good binding at the end of that fight from uh, Biscuit Hat there, just to make sure that they could pick the blitz. Now it looks like oh Ooh, that's a lot of damage. Not quite the damage that you want from Caitlyn yet, and Labyrinth is gonna Secured at least um, the blue bluff. 
Yeah. And as we start to get, you know, as we start to get into the the mid game, you know, we're still a little, we're still close to early game. We're starting to get to the phase where people are starting to get their first their first item complete. Um, but we see, you know, just looking at some of the some of the KP and where all the kills are falling, they're putting a lot of the kills on this clid. So it looks like if Lavi can maybe direct his attention topside, maybe shut down this clid, get that extra gold, that'll be really beneficial for them. But additionally, mm -hmm. looking at it, you have you have such a widespread. You know, you have six assists on the Mordekaiser, seven assists on the Morgana, a uh, hundred KP on the Lux. That's that's really good. That you, that's what you really want to see. So I mean, this is just a you're in a you're in a tricky situation here. So let's talk about the comps real quick. Oh, before I do that, there's a trade coming in the Necro. That's a lot of damage coming with the tit uh, tit Um. What's the name? Yeah, Titanic Hydra. Yeah, That's Conqueror. a lot of damage. Yeah, or press the, yeah, Conqueror, Titanic. Super strong. Man, Necro guy with Clad is a force to be reckoned. I played with him last season, and his Necro guy is really clean. And here comes the Noodle. Oh, is that a predictive snowball? I don't think it is, but three of the mid lane. A three team from the uh, members of the rev team is coming in. It's another Aaron, boys. And here comes Mordekaiser and Lux. Biscuit has a cure to kill, and... This is going to be really bad for the red team. They do not want to fight right now. Lux is 4 0. Morgana 0 0 7. The blue team is just really ahead, and red team just want to farm and slow the game down. They're just making it worse. Yeah, and that's the problem. It's, it's Bukai, uh, to Bukai K4, while well, he's, he's playing very well, he's playing very hyper aggressive on Tristana. Tristana, I think, in this point of the game, with how far down you are, you need to be incredibly careful. You can't like you can't really just fight anything this at this point. You're that far behind. Hmm. And because Dr. Pengu tried to get something out of this, but oh, can yeah. he do anything? But clay damage is way too strong. And can they actually Come finish it off? And that's a, gonna be a kill coming in for clay by Necro guy. And the red team can't do anything right now. They're just too behind in gold. Yeah, we are seeing a completely different, like a complete turnaround from game one. Um, you know, game game one was was very it was it was close. And but it nice was, binding coming mm -hmm. up from Gregana. Unfortunately, the, there is not enough damage to finish up the case. And that's a nice hook into the trap coming in from the blitz crank. That's a flash coming in. Another good binding. He's gonna be here comes Gregana ulti, and also, here comes the stun. And this is gonna be another secure kill coming in from the blue team. Nice double kill from Rob and Biscuit Hat. That's gonna be crucial for the bot lane. That bot lane is actually disgusting. And at the same time, while the bot lane triumph, blue team also seems to get the Rift Herald. So it's going to be really difficult to stop this snowball. Unless somehow blue team decides to throw the Rift Herald in the middle of the river like Nolan's team yesterday. Hey, whoa, hold on. Time out. I'm on the team. <laughs> mistakes happen. Hey, whoa. The play. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, mistakes happen. But uh, I, I do think that it's it's very uh, I do think it's very you know it is going to be very difficult to stop the bleeding. You're I think the biggest thing you really need to look for is you are you have some very outstanding bounties, particularly on the Kled and the Lux. That's a thousand gold right there. That's a lot of gold coming in for Kled. Kled is looking mighty scary. Asian prodigy, AZ prodigy, you really do not want to engage any fights right now. The yeah. um, blue team. Total is, and here comes Clad. I told you, you don't want to engage right now. Here comes Clad coming in, rolling in, rolling in the deep, and here he comes. And there's another pick coming in from the blue team. This is going to be really bad. The blue team just can't stop snowballing right now. And here, there goes a bit bot tower. And Rift Herald used in the mid lane. That's going to be another tower in the mid lane. Yeah, so the, I, I don't know. I saw you really already giving grace, but like, Dr. Pengu just being able to split push, you're not really getting a, you know. He's, he's doing what he can, but like, you're so far down, you're starting to see the Necro guy is really... It looks like, it looks like right now, if you're, you know, if you're, if you're the team, if you know, your Biscuits team, you want to play around your top lane, you want to play around Necro guy, he's going to be the reason, you know, you do so well. Here's, um, here's a little education for the jungle players in here, maybe. So, if you are a jungle player, and it's about 15 minutes in, you want to make sure that you get the Red Trinket. Uh, but before that, we got a nice pick coming in, but he flashes out, nice flash blinded coming up from, from Morgana, and that's going to be an easy secure for the Mordekaiser ultimate. But as I was saying, uh, for the junglers, you kind of want to get your Red Trinket around level 8 or 9, or even earlier if you can, because 
right now, um, let's see, a B BF5? Yeah, Biscuit Force has a lot, yeah, yeah, has a lot of vision control right now over the map, and they know where the enemy is, where right? they know where the junglers and the laner are when they're rotating. And that's only going to help them snowball. You need the red trinket in order to clear vision and deny them vision of, you know, your your character, your your players. I absolutely agree with that. I think the the biggest name, like the name of this game right now, and and part of the reason uh, Levy seems falling so far behind is is attributed to vision score. If you look, the you know your your support differential in in vision score is about you know we're starting to clean it up now, but it's it's about mm. a six vision score differential. Your mid lane is pretty significant. Your jungles are on par with one another, um, and there's a slight top lane differential, but even still, it's in favor of of the Biscuit Force Five. So, I mean, you're looking at a team that idealistically has maybe 10, 15% 10, more vision control. And even so, it's more around the important objectives that you really need. Oh, wow. Oh, Good wow. Old. That was pretty ambitious, but that is just a lot of damage. That was by, um, we're kind of Q and W, by the way, the damage. Oh, yeah, on the Lee Sin, disgusting. Yeah, Labyrinth tagging, uh, Labby just having that Dusk Blade. It's not gonna help with the team fight at all. You're gonna be too squishy to engage or anything. And red, their your team, the red team is designed for picks. So unless Lee Sin can somehow magically insect the kick or Blisk gets the hook, there's not much that the red team can do at this moment because yeah, this they're is, so behind. This just seems like this is gonna be a slow stranglehold to the end of the game. I mean, you're seeing a valiant effort group of spots. See if we can fight it now. But really, I don't know if that's even a, a an idealistic option. And right now, the uh, yeah, I, I agree. And right now, if you look at the map, the map positions right now is three top lane, one bot lane, and one mid lane for the blue team. They're splitting up the team, and they have no control over the macro game for the red team right now. So this is looking really, really bad. And the snowball, like I said before, just does not stop at all. And here's a nice engage coming in from the Mordekaiser. Ulti is activated, banned to the Shadow Realm, and it's gonna be an easy execution. Edge and Prodigy seems to have given up, stopped noobing, accepted the fate. Oh, that's a nice two man binding coming in from the logs, and nice ultimate. That's gonna be a chunk of damage to Dr. Pangu, but unfortunately, there's not gonna be any kills coming in for the blue team. Yeah, there's a. Golly, you hate. Yeah, you really do hate to see this. Labby's team has such a dominant game of performance. An insect training. Uh, ooh. Someone said an insect train leading to the blitz pool. That'd be really good. You know, you could just you could just like chain that. Oh man, if, if only that was a thing. That would be stuff of legend. That would be LCS material. Not PMA LCS, but like actual pro LCS material. Yeah, if you just if you like Tristana combo. Yeah, not even Tristana, yeah, yeah. Leasing wait. <laughs> Leasing combo into Tristana into another the, the nice uh binding coming in from Morgana safely getting out of there with the black shield. Speaking of black shield, Morgana by herself pretty much counters two of her two of Labby's champ champions. Lee Sin and um Blitzkrieg. And that's a lot of damage that was coming in from Tristana, but can he secure the kill? Oh fortunately he cannot. And here comes Necro guy that's a lot of damage. He's under the base, under the tower. He does he doesn't care. He's going in. And he's gonna survive. And Biscuit Hat just taking a lot of damage. But that's gonna be an easy secure for Necro Guy. Legendary. And Rob still isn't dead. And Mordecai just secures for the final kill on the ace. And it almost looks like this is gonna be GG for the blue team. It may be. This may come down to it. We are seeing Necro Guy output a ton of damage. And you know, oh if, this, if the game is to end here, you know, just preemptive, you know, like locker room talk. I think Necro guy, one hundred percent, would be MVP. This just like his his map presence damage output. Whoa, 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 whoa! Let, the game is not over yet. Yeah, let's not. Oh, assume this, this is the why MVP I said locker here. room. To, this is locker room talk. But it could be it could be anyone. It could be it could be happy by three. It could be. I want to see. Man. I really hope it is. I want to see. I want to see. Uh, I want to see. I want to see some new new action. Some sweet oh. new new flash ultis. You know, for all you know, an MPB could be a caster minion on the blue team. Ooh, yo, hey cast, hey caster minion, give me your opinion on how the game works. Yeah, you never I know. I didn't until die. 
<laughs> uh, the uh, little Castamania deck could. <laughs> I think I, I can. think I can. I think I can. <laughs> yeah, running, caster minion running it down mid. I think I okay, can. Okay, to be honest, caster minion does hurt a lot. Oh, yeah. Oh, get him. Oh, denied scuttle, baby. Oh, you hate to see God, it. The scuttles. That's, the scuttles that's, a, that's, a, that's an exclamation point, Joe, in the chat, please. I hate to see that. It's going to be another dragon coming in. They don't even need this dragon, quite frankly. They can just fight without it. But this is at this point it's a nice icing on the cape. Oh, that's a nice flash coming in. I'm not sure about the biscuit head flash. It was kinda ambitious, but I see the point. It's pretty ambitious though. So. Oh Clay just a oh Clay wants to ooh. It's a great call actually. Pushing the bot lane to generate pressure. So whenever oh, uh, the red team responds the on the bot tower, they can just go for Baron. He has a TP available. Then again, so does Dr. Pengu and Bukake Porobo. Unfortunately, their teleport doesn't even matter because they're so far behind that their team fight is pretty much irrelevant to the blue team. Only thing you need to do is make sure that you can get some picks coming in. And look at that, just pushing and Nico guys constantly pushing on the bot lane. Yeah, that's what we were talking about. Just seeing this this Kled split push is just going to be disgusting. It's a champion you can't really stop, like no matter how hard you try. Mhm. Mm now there's no one that they can contain Kled at this point. Oh, that was just really a close one. Oh, this is a close one for both teams. Oh, uh, and the Lux binding lands a Blitzcrank, but unfortunately nothing's gonna happen. Boo, boo. Let's see some action. Boo. Right, yeah, clap, clap, clap. Right, yeah. <laughs> and the worst part about this is if the red team has decent wave clear, they can sort this out, but they do not. Like, yeah. Caitlyn, wave clear isn't the best. Tristana isn't the best either, safely. You know, they're just going to get picked so easily without, you know, when they're trying to clear the wave. So, by the minute, it's getting worse and worse for Lavish team. Yeah. I think this is just one of those games where it's like, ah, we gotta stop the bleeding. Like, we gotta, you know, this bleeding started 20, like, maybe 10, 15 minutes ago, and we needed to stop it in 10, 15 this minutes This isn't ago. bleeding. You can't fix this with for, um, first aid. This is, you gotta go to infirmary for this. This is too too far back. Need some need some staples or stitches? This, this uh, is gonna decide that. This definitely needs some stitches. <laughs> or, or actually, you might need both at the rate that this is going. Yeah, it's like, it's, it's just three different wounds open and you just gotta address it. It is not looking good for the red team. They do, we do see Labby. Labby's looking for some... You know, he's just sitting over there. Labby gonna be the hero that they have? Uh, I don't know. Let's go. Where, where Labby is in, the blue team doesn't have a vision particularly. Uh, but... La uh oh. Uh oh. Labby's, gonna, Labby's, Labby's, Labby's last opportunity is to Under the, the five seconds, that's, you're gonna have to land a Q somewhere. Oh, he landed get the in Q. There. Can get he in go there, in? Labby. Do it, Labby. Oh, oh it's just not that's close. That's, that was actually that's pretty gonna close. That's going to be the demise coming in for Tristana and Labyrinth, Labby. But here comes Clyde just running it down on bot lane. They, no one can stop him. Not even Darius not with a full proc can stop this Clyde. And Blue Team just securing the Baron is just gonna make it worse. That's a nice hook coming in, but do they have the damage and resources to finish it? No, the rest of the team are here. They can't even finish the um the Morgana that was less than half health, and it's gonna end up with Blitzcrank dying and ultimately ending the game. And here comes a nice pull coming in from the OG Juice man. But can he do anything with the pull? I don't think he can. But minions, I'm telling you, Caster Minion does a lot of damage. You're not right. Well, now that we're looking at this, everyone on uh, everyone on the team with the Biscuit Force Five now has a bounty on their head. Bounty, bounty! Oh my God, you're right. That, that, let's count that. Let's, everyone, do math. Seven hundred, three hundred, fifteen hundred. Um, one. Oh, you're looking at, that, you're oh, looking at two. You're looking at my two. two twenty-one fifty. Yeah, twenty-one fifty in in gold. Yeah. Oh, oh my God. Okay, so we're missing a um. We just have to, um, we just got an Ember Alert. Where did Labby go? Uh, oh my god, Labby, that, La Labby just disappeared out of nowhere and no one can find him. He oh, just get popped him. out of nowhere. Here comes Necro guy, not afraid of dying. Flashes out, maybe he is afraid of dying. He flashes out of the fight and then continue to blue team, continue to chase the red team. Oh, that's a nice um, pull coming in for Wonder Kai to deny the W 
coming in from Tristana, but they can't secure the kill, but ultimately that's going to be the end of the game for the blue team. So now before we leave, so that's a thousand. So it ended with, uh, let's see, 1400, 1050 10, 10, and 1400, 2450, final count on the, uh, yes, yeah, that's the, that's the oh, final wow. count for the gold. Uh, 2250 on a bounty that's like total bounty for the team that's like you can't that's a that's more than that's more than half of <laughs> infinity edge that's pretty crazy what the heck Ooh, that's ooh, yeah mm, you hate to see it yeah can, so yeah see. no we got we got joe in chat i think joe yeah. can we get you have to say that see that oh yeah you, oh you hate to see it yeah i hate to see that let's look at some stats real quick shall we um, and once again, for those who tuned in from the beginning, sorry I came in a little later. Uh, I didn't realize that Matt was solo casting, and I didn't want him in to be alone. Uh, so hopefully my casting was sufficient enough. I'm not really good at casting. Um, you did having great. Said, thanks, BB. Hey. Uh, <laughs> having said, let's look at the uh, damage chart, which I'm actually surprised by. If you look at clad damage, it's only 9.9, .9, it's only 10k. No, but that that's can't be right. <laughs> No, but but that's understandable because he's bursting people too hard that there's no sustained damage. Oh, true. Whereas Mord is actually like sustaining fights, making them. Yeah, they're just constantly training. Mord is constantly training, and it's like playing an assassin almost. When it's you're playing brain. an assassin, you just burst their health, right? And there's no consistent damage. And Cled is doing so much damage, burst damage, that they can't survive. That they can't. He can't do consistent damage. Uh, just too much damage coming in from Clyde. And Clyde, I think, with the macro club, we're going to bot lane for the um his gank. Bot lane gank after getting the top tower, ultimately securing the dragon, as well as continuing to push bot lane to generate pressure, really made a difficult time for the red team. Yeah. So, real quick, let's do some MVPs. Um, game 2 MVP, who are you going to give it to? Um, game two, you said? Yeah, this is this was game two. I don't know. The um, to be honest, everyone played pretty decently. I would um, agree. OG Juice Man, who's that again? Who is that? Uh, um, that was that was uh, that was the Mordecai. Yeah, I, I I know, but like that's it tank, the, tank, uh, field, tank field juice for me. Uh, tank field juice. Yeah, I'm not voting for tank field juice for personal reasons. Oof. Uh, no, Necro, nothing, not... <laughs> Necro, Necro guy in the top lane, man. I'm telling you, that that clad was disgusting. Um, yeah, I agree. I agree. Okay, so, um, before anyone have a backlash on me, I'm joking. I, just, I just a prank, bro. Just a prank. I love the guy. I love the guy, dude. Oof, come on. I'm joking. I'm, I'm joking. I don't mean it. I'm sorry, dude. It's you played just a prank, bro. Hold on. Let me do this. You played great. Yay! All right, there we go. Moving on to the actual analysis now. Necro guy, um, just did so much in the map. In terms of you know amount of pressure generated, amount of kills, amount of participation in team fights, just that man when he puts on that carry pants can do anything. I know this because I was in a team with him, and this guy when he is in the zone, he's in the zone. Most of the time, my team just throws, but he can solo carry your team if need to be, and especially with the lower bracket with less of high higher elo players. Existing. This is Necro guy's time to shine. This is Necro guy's time to become the number one top laner. <clears throat> and, he did, and he proved that in this game. 9 0 4, 165 CS, 11, almost 12k gold in 25 minute game, having a big impact. That's just a lot of gold. And uh, just a, that's a lot of work for Kled. Yeah. So. Now that we are, uh, now that we have finished with this, and it seems that the MVP pool has kind of filtered itself out. Your game two MVP is going to be Necro guy. Game one, there was oh. a three way, there was a three way tie. Three way uh, tie. Why don't we just put the whole team in then? That's Jeez. you know that's what I said. We're just, <laughs> I, I don't I don't want to you know Labby said pick one and we'll send him up. So I I think we should get the we should get the top laner, which would be uh, that would be. Formerly oh, Uncle Jemima, which is now Doctor Pingu. So, if so we are get... we just having two, two top laners in the uh, MVP? Yeah, we're just gonna we're gonna grab them because uh, I got some I have some questions for them. We'll send oh, Sebastian. Okay. 
So let's, if you guys can make your way over to player of the game one, we will conduct the interview. Thank you, everyone. Ineko guy and Dr. Pengu, if you could come up to the player of the game one. Yo, what's up, guys? Well, hello, yeah. hello, hello. I, I'm sorry I missed the game one, so I don't know if um, you actually popped up, Dr. Pengu, but I'm sure you did. Um, As per usual. <laughs> oh, in that first I'm, game, I'm, I was I'm, so I'm, scared. Oh, oh yeah, you, I mean, you usually play. Scared. I got flamed for playing Nasus. <laughs> oh, actually, I did see the part of that. You you popped off with Nasus. Yeah, I, I got, I got really flamed by Rob. He's like, wow, you only play Alawi and Nasus. I'm like, this is the first Nasus game I've ever played in PMLCS. <laughs> That's yeah, to say, I, I, I was so I surprised when you pulled it out. Yeah, I saw that, and I was like, wait, that's not Hillary Clinton. Yeah. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm like, definitely wrong here. Did you, did you get another name change? Jeez. Stealing everyone's name at this point. Yeah. Uh, really good game for both teams. Uh, I'm actually really surprised how the game turned out because I haven't caught game one, but apparently this game was very contrasting to game one to game two. So yeah. they're two very different mm -hmm. games, very snowballing games. Um, mm -hmm. That being said, Matt, do you have any questions first for these two players? Yeah, so uh, talk me talk me through pick band game one. Were you guys, it looked like you were targeting specifically, like you guys were kind of targeting bot lane. Like you guys just didn't. You like, oh, we'll leave. We'll we'll give respect to like one big champion. But like it seemed like bot lane was a target for for each of your teams. What you guys thought there? I think that's for you, Sebastian. Oh, all right. I, I uh, agree, both. Okay, yeah. I just I was like, <laughs> no, you didn't really like say anybody. Um. Well, yeah. So the reason why bot lane was the focus is because of um of Rob. I mean. He's a plat player. He's uh, he's shown he's very very adept at playing really any position that he plays, especially in the mid lane. Uh, we didn't really think about him pulling out the uh, the Morgana the Morgana bot. In you know hindsight being twenty twenty, we probably should have. We probably should have just respected the Morgana pick uh, just in general because he could flex it mid and it's just a bunch of shenanigans with not having locked roles. So. Uh, that was kind of a big, big oversight on our side, but um, but yeah, I mean that's the reason why we wanted to make sure that he was on the back foot. Um, wanted to make sure we gave ourselves the best chance to um, take away arguably the best uh, the best player on that squad. So uh, yeah, that's kind of the our whole thought process there. As um, far as Oh, go ahead. If you want. Uh, no, please go ahead. Fine, fine. I say, as far as our draft was concerned, the first game we were really focused more on banning out the pool. Labby, because we know he's a very aggressive player, and it is kind of one of our weaker spots is our early game in the jungle, so we want to make sure we can address that and you know, try and counter as much as possible. That second game, um, the, the Sivir was really, you know, locking out a lot of our wing condition bot lane because she can just wave clear and stay away. So that's kind of why we started targeting towards that in the second. And then obviously we threw some... Uh, Champs top lane because I just hate playing against Sebastian and wanted him to. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we need to stop meaning like this, dude. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's getting pretty bad at this point. Really funny because I was in Necro Guy's team, and every time that we had a rematch against Sebastian, he was like, "Oh, this is a rematch. I'm gonna get him this time." Because first time, first game, I believe he we lost pretty hard too. No, that was a game where he played Alawi and I played Kane, <laughs> and he couldn't beat me. Yeah, you had ult, I didn't. So who's counting, right? Anyways, yeah, anyways, um, yeah. but yeah, and the second time you played together, and a Necro guy's like, "Oh, it's time to settle the score. Like it's time to <laughs> do, 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 and it just goes and destroys Sebastian that game. It's always a fun time up there. And then the third game, I don't know what happened. I I don't know who won the third match. Uh, I think because I played against Oof last season three different times. I think the final score was four two. Maybe. I'm I think it was four. Either. I think it was four two. I subbed for for three different teams that played against Oof, or two different teams plus my my personal yeah, game. which is actually yeah. really really funny. Yeah, like, that's why. That's why I told actually. Them. You guys. Are that's actually. why I always tell Aaron. I'm like, hey man, we got to stop meeting like this. This is, this is getting <laughs> ridiculous at this point. I think I've played against Necro Guy more than any other top laner in this league at this point. This is more rivalry than Naruto versus Sasuke, to be honest. So, <laughs> I don't know. Guys, no, no. Look, look up top tier bracket. Well, I think tonight was, you know, really good games for both teams. I mean, obviously we both have stuff we need to work on, but we're still meshing together. And 
like you saw, first game, you know, it was looking really, really good for Labby's side. And then second game, you know, we were able to snowball that out. So I think it mm -hmm. shows to a lot of good potential on both teams. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, we went into game one. And the thing is that we knew that we needed to be we need to play just the slowest game possible with the uh, mm. with the Sivir and Asses pick. And it's like, yeah, you know, the Vagar is going to feel pretty bad, but if it ever comes down to that, I mean, a Nasus with, what, 500 stacks in, like, 25 minutes, it's like, eh, it's, it's kind of a feels bad at that point. So, yeah, game one, I, I think just game one, we played to our strengths a lot more than we did game two. Like, we even found ourselves um in, after pick ban kind of thinking like hey what's our win condition and we're, we were both kind of like well everybody on our team were like eh, not really too sure so um you know we definitely do need a bigger a better uh pick ban phase uh in these next coming weeks i think that's going to be one of our uh one of the main things we're going to start looking at as a team so mm -hmm. but yeah. otherwise really big ggs to to y'all absolutely It'd be fun to play in the finals <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that'll be that'll that'll be really animated battle right there. <laughs> yeah. But I was gonna say, it, 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 this is your first game. Mm -hmm. There's a lot more that you can do in the future mm -hmm. game. This is really a try a try run. Mm -hmm. See how yeah. you fare to the other teams, and there's only room for improvement at this point. Mm -hmm. I'm I agree. Glad to see you guys recognize the mistakes you made in the strength as well, and looking forward to you guys being. Um, given better performance for the next games. Yeah, for sure. I'm I'm definitely interested. I'm definitely going to be keeping up with uh, with these guys in the lower bracket because they're about to tear it up. I'm telling you that. Actually, yeah, you have a question. Um, not relating to the game itself, but I for the whole system. Um, how do you guys feel about this? Is Matt included as well? How do you guys feel about the lower bracket? There's oh, the fact that there's an upper and yeah, lower bracket. There's a lower and upper. Uh, yeah. How do you guys feel? How do you guys feel I mean, about that? I, I'm okay with it. Um, I, I wasn't really a, when I first heard the uh, suggestion, but I do think it does help a lot. You know, making sure that uh, you know certain certain people are able to kind of shine in their element because you know if we have a say silver jungle going against a plat diamond jungle, there's not really a lot of opportunity for them there to really you know show you know how they know the game and the things they're strong at and everything. So I think it definitely gives a lot more power to the individual player on this. And mm -hmm. it's it's kind of a, I don't want to say a less toxic environment, <laughs> but, you know, just a matter of it doesn't feel as oppressive for a yeah. lot of players. Yeah, it's very, yeah. very important in the kind of a, a friendly league where we're obviously trying to win, uh, but no one has a good time when they're playing against someone that is, you know, That's what he's significantly right higher. Yeah, exactly. Significantly higher up the ladder. Mm -hmm. can lead to some frustration so mm -hmm. i'm excited to see where this goes um i've been really enjoying the quality of the uh top league games that i've seen so far i think it was what wasn't Ho well, not hoagie who's the other one? Oh, uh, yeah it was uh it was the uh, one that had played yeah the one last night was nolan versus hoagie yeah uh, steve versus hoagie's team which was yeah, yeah that was that was another lower league wasn't there yeah that was that, that was, was that was a lower that was one they're yeah, I thought there was another higher bracket already. The, the first higher bracket is is play, being is played right now, actually, actually right? Just, I think okay. it just finished. Yeah, I think I, I, think it, I it just tuned ended. in part of it in the halfway yeah. point. It just ended, yeah. and they're gonna stream. They're about to stream another one. Yeah, right the okay. one. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that, as a as a person that wasn't really a big proponent of a of a lower and upper league, um, I, I think I think it has its strong. I think it has its strong points. Um, I, I definitely do think that uh, the pros outweigh the cons, in my honest opinion, uh, because I, I do feel as if you still have those instances, like even even with today, with a platinum, you know, being in the game against you know silvers and golds and everything else like that. And of course, there's still going to be some like fine tuning that goes into this. But I think overall, the players that have been a part of this lower bracket league. Um, now have a chance to actually play in a 5v5 team setting. And you kind of lose that a lot as someone that's, uh, for me personally, as someone that's played since the league's inception, 
um you kind of lose out on that like it's like there mm -hmm. there are people on my team you know like shout out to joystick and uh and to arizona prodigy like they've ne they've never played in a split so like they're asking questions that like oh are no brainers to me labby and uh and bukake poro but at the same time it's like wait uh, you know in my eyes i'm like oh wait no they're learning and that's such a great feeling at the exact same time because it's like oh now they're a part of whatever it is that we learned and everything else like that they be get they get to be a part they get to be a part of the league and you know now speaking from a moderator's perspective that's always been the goal of pma lcs in general is to make sure that we have inclusion among all types of brothers that you know come from different creeds backgrounds and in this mm -hmm. case you know playing time practice time uh whatever whatever it is that they have you know we can facilitate a friendly and more competitive environment for those types of people so um like I said, I wasn't really a big fan of it to begin with, but you know, it's kind of growing on me. Yeah, I'm gonna have to add on to that as well because um, if if I I am to look at it this way, um, there's no one person that you know hyper carries or controls the entire team in the lower bracket. So in essence, everyone has to try their best in order to uh, make the team work instead of putting one resource all the resource on that one individual to carry the team and right. it really changes how the team works as well uh, for example i'm not adding uh, certain teams uh, but um last season svt pretty much poured all the resource towards um by titus for him to carry not saying that the team was bad but that's usually their general idea and strat which didn't allow the rest of the team to you know learn or learn more about their play style and etc and participate in seeing the lower bracket and because they have to learn themselves with the team as well i think it's a better learning opportunity for who, those who are new or participating in essence and seeing the lower bracket play is completely different from playing as watching higher bracket or even pro as like night and day and from that if other people are playing you can see your mistakes as a lower bracket players and then constantly try to fix that you know mistake that you make and i think this idea of lower break and high break it um it's really cool yeah i would agree uh, i'm gonna chime in because this is my this is my first split so coming in i you know i i started casting just a little bit last split and i saw a lot of very high level players and i knew i wouldn't be able to hold my own against a lot of them particularly because a lot of them are very mechanically skilled um as someone who's I, i'm not you know i'm not a phenomenal player but i have a decent grasp and understanding of the skills in the game of the macro play um getting the lower and higher bracket uh, gives us the opportunity like players who haven't you know been in this semi-competitive setting the opportunity to still learn from the higher bracket as well as ask questions to the lower bracket like hey you know what is like how does this work like you know good example is the like there's, we had some we had a teammate you know working working with our jungler saying like hey you know, how, like, what would be a good idea to do to this and, like, trying to get them to learn different play styles based around them. So it's really good to see that kind of stuff happen. Mm -hmm. So I would agree with that. I, I think there's a lot of benefit to it, but maybe, you know, there's always, there's always things that can be better. But, like, I think, I think right now this system right now is good, particularly because subs didn't get utilized a lot last, uh, last split. So that was... It was in general, too. Yeah. So. so just maybe this is a better alternative. Hmm. I'm just glad everyone's playing because I know um, Arizona Prodigy, especially, uh, he was on my team. And so I said it towards the end of the split, I don't care. I just want to you know, participate in a game. And I'm right. glad to see that he's, you, you know, that guy. You were oh, the absolutely. Team. Yeah, and it's it's no see... fun if everyone just has to sit there because, oh, we want to win. So we have right. to bench someone who really wants to play. So yeah, I'm just glad that everyone is. gets yeah. to play. But that being said, uh, we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. For... Is Sean kicking us out? Oh, no, yes. no, no. Well, yes, but we also have to finish because, you know, we yep. get the other game is starting. Um, so thank you for tuning in, guys. This has been a lower bracket. Uh, my name is Hansu Lucida Sun. Join here joined by Matt, 2702. And thanks for watching. Good night. Let's go ahead and get another game rolling, boys. GG. See you.